So in this last video in this series, we lashed our wind generator up into a cradle to give it a quick test to see what kind of power output we'd get. I put in one coil and had a look at the amps and the volts and lit a panel with it by spinning it by hand, which I thought was kind of awesome, actually. But because I lashed it up, I couldn't show you some of the detail. Now, this is the rotor. It's uh, 0.8 of a metre across, incidentally, and we're looking at the bottom end. And I promised to show you the magnetic arrangement, and here it is. It's a whole load of ceramic magnets. These are four and a half centimetres by two and a half centimetres by one centimetre thick. They have 3.5 kilograms of pull and there's 72 of them in that ring. All I did was glue them on north, south, north, south, north, south and then put a lot of resin in them to hold them all fixed. So that is how I've attached the magnets. Now, I think it's probably going to stay, but <laughs> we'll soon find out. I mean, a lot of this actually is just me doing trial and error. Now, before I began on this wind turbine stuff, I didn't know that much. I've, I've learned quite a lot by doing it, and by doing the investigations that we've been doing on this, I think I've acquired a reasonable amount of knowledge to see if I can actually build one of these things. Now, our big aim here is twofold. One is to make it really, really cheap. And I had to spend some more money, and I'll show you later what I spent some money on, but is to make it really cheap, under £100. And the other is to get it comparable to a one kilowatt commercial generator. So we want a direct comparison. Now I'm taken up with the idea that there are two approaches to this. You can put something on the axle, in which case you need high torque, and you can put something on the rim of a big wheel, in which case you need low torque. Because the low torque high speed at the rim, in my mind, is equal to the high torque low speed at an axle. So I'm not going to be attaching anything to the axle. I won't be putting a motor on here. I won't be putting any gearing on there. If I want a faster speed, I would make the wheel bigger because that's the whole point of this is to demonstrate low torque, high speed. So that's what we're after. A um, budget build, doesn't cost too much, takes advantage of low torque and high speed and aims at competing with a one kilowatt commercial generator. Now I've had a few posts from people saying that'll never do a kilowatt and I thought well I don't know to be honest but I do know that commercial kilowatt generators never do a kilowatt. If you get a 25 mile per hour wind on them sure they'll generate a kilowatt but as the average wind speed here in the UK is about 10 to 12 miles an hour the average output of a one kilowatt generator is somewhere between 70 and 100 watts. It's really quite embarrassing and really quite ridiculous that you would pay £2,000 for that kind of output. This thing, so far it's cost me uh, £48 actually, and because of because the extra spend. And I'm expecting a similar performance to a commercial one kilowatt generator. Now, will it produce a kilowatt? I don't know, and that's going to depend on the wind speed, isn't it? I mean, what is it? Um, woo, Area squared, wind speed squared, something like that? I don't know. But it's going to be dependent on the wind speed to what it outputs. If we get a wind speed of 10 miles an hour and it outputs 150 watts, we have beat a commercial um, one kilowatt generator. And I'd be happy with that. If we do get a 25 mile an hour wind and we get a kilowatt out of it, that'll be awesome! But I'm not really expecting a 25 mile an hour wind on the days that I look to test this. We're going to have variable wind, so we'll see. Okay, when I lash this up, I put it onto a pallet with a foot and then we put some arms around it and then we put a single coil. And of course I'm going to put other coils, but put a single coil and tested it. Now I thought that looked really quite scrappy actually. And we've done a nice job on this. We've done quite a lot of detail on the rotor and I was quite pleased with the, the way it's looking, the way it's been built. But personally, I thought the pallet was a little bit scrappy. Now, a friend of mine donated another um, whiteboard, another smart board, which remember is that aluminium honeycomb. So from that aluminium honeycomb, I cut two one meter sections <coughs> as a top plate and a base plate. I did a diagonal diagonal at the center. I've got a socket to take the axle of the turbine. And then I put aluminium here, angles, these were recovered again from a, a display stand actually. Aluminium angles here on those diagonals. And we're going to uh, put baffle plates in there in the same way that we did on the pallet. But this whole thing now is going to be freestanding. 
So the rotor goes in here and the baffle plates will go on there. Let's attach those. Okay, so now all I've done is put the rotor in its little socket, slid the baffle, baffle plates into their aluminium angles and um, screwed the baffle plates in with some self-tapping screws. Now I've got an identical plate. Remember I made two of these and there's an identical plate one meter by one meter with exactly the same arrangement. So we've got the central socket, we've got the aluminium angles to take the baffle plates. In that central socket is a 12 millimeter hole and at every corner, see if I can show you one of these, right there is another 12 millimeter hole and this is what I spent the other 15 pounds on. I bought five of these. These are 12 millimeter threaded bar, one meter long. They go through the holes and through the center and everything bolts down. So all I now have to do really is pop this top on, put the bolts through and bolt it all together. Now I've made it in this collapsible form because of course I've got to take it on the roof. And it, if I can break it down and carry it, then no problem at all. The whole thing actually weighs 30 kilos or less. It's 19.4 kilos for the um, central rotor, all told. These plates here are quite light. I don't think they're 11 kilos. I'm not quite sure what they are. So the whole thing is less than 30 kilos. But let's put this top plate on. <coughs> but there it is in its vertical orientation with its baffle bars, its threaded bars, all fastened together. And it's pretty free spinning. Obviously the coils go under here in this section here which is why that's so deep and that will actually fit a, a microwave oven transformer coil so that's probably where I'm going to be well that is where I'm going to be putting them actually uh, and I put it in the vertical orientation here but to be honest this could equally be in a horizontal orientation now I've got one more threaded bar to put in and that goes through that central axle because remember that central axle is a pipe so there's one more threaded bar to put through that central axle and that means turning it on its side. So I'm going to do that and leave it in that orientation when I put that bar in. Okay, so that's it in its vertical orientation. So like I say, you could either have it horizontal or vertical if you wished. Um, actually, it really is a thing of beauty. I actually think it looks a bit like a TIE fighter, in fact. Now we've got these bars sticking out the bottom here. And either we could saw those off as use the, or use those. I mean, if it does need more fixing down, then obviously these would be a great place for guy uh, wires. You have to guy wire it down. Uh, equally, they'd be standoffs for feet, something like that. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to saw those off or not. I'm probably going to leave them on for now anyway. That's the entire build done though. And it was these bars here that cost me the extra £15, but I think well worth it to really stabilise the entire structure, actually. Much better like this, I think, than when we had it on the pallet. And obviously this still breaks down so that I can actually uh, move this and carry it really easily. So it's much more stable, quite a lot prettier, and I think um, really more useful in that you can put it in two orientations. But that is the generator build finished. There won't be any changes to this now. All I have to do now is stick my coils in here. So that's the next thing to do, obviously, is put the coils in. Again, give it a test. Uh, again, we've got absolutely no wind at all. Otherwise, I would have taken this outside and put it in. But I'm, I'm expecting this to rotate pretty freely, actually. And you can see that. You know, if I give that a gentle push with my hands, then you can see that rotating really quite freely and really quite nicely and very level which is sort of cool so this is approaching finished we've probably got one more video with the coils in place and then we'll be up on the roof so i hope you're enjoying the series and thank you very much for watching and now uh, there is one other thing actually i think i forgot to mention people have been asking for plans for this now, of course, there aren't any plans because what we're doing is making this from whatever scrap we can find. But the general idea is that idea of um, low torque, high speed. So we're using discs that can be driven with this squirrel cage rotor. And pretty much anything we'll do, to be honest, that will do that job. So there aren't any real plans for it outside of the video. One guy actually did post, uh, he watched, I think it was video two or maybe video three, probably video three. 
which was the last video. And he said, um, huh, I can't build that from this video. There's not enough information. It's true. You can't build it from one video. You would need to watch the video series, so please do. And all of the information is contained in the video series. And like I say, I'm unlikely to do plans. But anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you're enjoying the series so far.